Hey there friends, thanks for checking in. Today we're looking at the new Kimber R7 Mako. They released this two months ago. Nobody really saw it coming. Kimber jumped into the subcompact 9mm handgun with a double stack magazine game. It's becoming a crowded market and that's always good. You know, it's it's the desire of the concealed carrier to carry more rounds and Kimber offered their Mako, R7 Mako, two months ago. A couple... Real nice features. It is ambidextrous. It does have the magazine release and the slide stop on both sides, making it left-handed friendly. It comes with two magazines, a 13-round mag that will offer three-finger contact. All right, Kimber's branding this as a 14-round. That's considering that there is a round in the chamber. And an 11-round magazine. They're branding it as 12. Same philosophy there with two finger contact this r7 mako is available in two variations one with the red dot installed and one without the one without is optic ready you could install this exact same red red dot this is a crimson tray cts 1500 3 moa red dot msrp on this it's like 180 dollars so it's not a high-end red dot but it's not bad either i have this on a couple of my pistols and it works just fine the msrp with the red dot installed is 7.99 without is 5.99 so you know if you do the math you'll figure that you're paying them 20 bucks to install the red dot you can do that yourself and get the 5.99 pistol whatever but if you go with it you're looking at this case here it does come with the two mags the paperwork the lock and everything else kimber does an excellent job making very good looking handguns and the r7 mako in, in my opinion is no exception it does have a gritty texturing everywhere the the hand sits on the pistol does have front serrations there ambidextrous as i mentioned cts 1500 nice red dot and when i took it to the range it was pretty nice i have to say i did shoot it side by side with the Springfield Armory Hellcat. We're going to do a little comparison on the table here. But it also comes with True, Go True Glow Night Sights. All right, that will co-witness through the CTS 1500. And the front night sight has an orange outline. And I like I like that. Whether it's orange or, or green or yellow, I think that's always a nice touch. The trigger... I'm measuring right at five and a quarter pounds. The website says between five and six and three quarters. Kind of a large difference there, but it is a flat face trigger with a trigger bar safety in there. I showed clear, right? It is. And you're looking at a reset right there for the follow-up shots. I said I would compare it with the Hellcat. Just a quick table comparison. I shot these side by side. I have much more experience with the Hellcat. This is the Flat Dark Earth OSP Springfield Armory Hellcat. If we look at it from this perspective, we can see that the footprint, this is a Shield RMSC, and the Crimson Trace 1500, CTS 1500, has the same. So, you know, these would work with each other. But the barrel length on the R7 Mako is 3.37. So if we look at the barrel length or the slide length, I should say, you're looking at about a half inch longer with the R7 Mako. And both have 13 round mags, and you're looking at a very similar grip length. But if we look at the grip width, and you can really notice at the range, the R7 Mako is wider. So here I can... Pretty much get my fingers almost all the way around on the grip. And this, you know, it's just, it's a bit wider. Okay, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe, maybe that doesn't demonstrate it well. But let's get it on the scale and we'll take a look at the weight between the two. Here we have the Kimber R7 Mako, one pound, six and three quarters ounces. The unloaded weight, 22 and three quarters. If we look at the Hellcat, 18 and a quarter ounce so there is a weight difference let's throw 12 rounds on here 23 and a quarter with the hellcat the r7 mako 27 so you're looking at almost 28 so you're looking at 
quite a bit of a weight difference. When shooting them side by side, I can say that both fired, fed, ejected, and was very accurate with, you know, the sighted in red dots certainly helps, but both were very accurate and I did enjoy shooting them side by side. This is not necessarily a comparison review, but I have to say, I like the Hellcat just a little bit better. You know, I have more experience with it and I'm a, a fan of, of that gun, but I, I don't mind the Mako. I will say, one of the things that Kimber did with this is they, they moved the ejection port to the side of the slide. They call it a hooded ejection port because it's not right here where most pistols have their ejection port. And so the philosophy there is that it will prevent the, the gases from obstructing or at least fogging up the red dot. And maybe that's true, maybe it's not. I have never had that problem before. I've never had that issue. I never felt like when I shot this or other handguns I have with red dots that I had to clean off that glass. But it's just not something that I looked for. Kimber claims that that will prevent gases and fog and everything else from interfering with the red dot. So whether it's a solution to a problem that doesn't exist or it is a necessary improvement with the ejection port i'll let you guys decide i'm really not sure but it did fire nice at the range let's go ahead and roll through some of that footage and then we'll check out the internals let's see if the r7 mako will charge when driving the mag home and it does. How about a lip wrist test? Yeah, it works. The R7 Mako, it passed the Lipra's test. The R7 Mako offers a pretty simple disassemble. We can see that the firearm is unloaded. It does have these takedown levers similar to a Glock. They fit pretty flush with the frame, so you have to get your thumb and your forefinger in there, pull back a little bit and get a good grip on that. And then what happens is pull trigger and it comes off just like that. I've seen other firearms and I have other firearms that do that where you don't have to slide it off. And it, it's pretty nice. Here's your polymer frame and a captured recoil spring and the 3.37 inch barrel. 3.37, okay? Might be easier just to say 3.4 inches. And then to reassemble, you just simply put the slide into uh, on the frame just like this, all right, and then just pull back, and then you are reassembled. What do you guys think of this handgun? You know, 13 rounds, 11 rounds, 7.99. You know, by them jacking the price up $100 from its initial launch is is pretty common. We see that with so many of the manufacturers out there, just about everyone during this gun buying surge that's been happening in the last couple years has raised their MSRP. Kimber certainly did that. But at the range, this performed really well, I have to say. I was, I was pleased with it. It does compare well with some of the other models, uh, other manufacturers that create models in the same class. Um, perhaps a... Full comparison will be done on this channel in the future, but today we're just looking at the Kimber R7 Mako, and here it is, and maybe we'll see more of this in the future. This is not mine. I borrowed it from Rider's Range, and that's the range I shot at, and I certainly appreciate that, and I certainly enjoyed shooting and putting many rounds through the Kimber R7 Mako. If you like videos like this, please subscribe and share. I always appreciate thumbs up button. Thanks for watching and you guys be safe.